Rita, I'm so glad you came. I was hoping that we could talk. You're anxious, aren't you? He makes these amazing clocks, and what he's trying to do with the clocks is to make them smell. Um, because he wants to be the greatest clockmaker in the world. And he thinks that by making a clock smell, that, um, that, by, that will conjure up past memories for people, that he can give people memories. So, for instance, he'll make a clock of Christmas, and Father Christmas and snow, and uh, the, the, the presents, and he'll have cinnamon and cider and wood smoke smelling out of the clock. But at the moment, as the play begins, his clocks are f he's failing in his experiments to get the smell uh, and to make it last. So this is his, his goal, is to, is to get the clock, the smells. And, and what happens with, with Frida, who's the, the woman who comes into his shop, that, that she inspires him to make his greatest clock, the clock that smells of her. Frida uh, has a broken clock that she needs fixed, so she goes to Heinrich Mann's shop, and uh, the clock has been broken due to her very complex relationship with her husband, Adolphus. And so this story is uh, kind of about in one world, we see her relating to Heinrich Mann and uh, their interactions as they work on this clock together. And in another, we see a different version of Frida, where um, she exists in a kind of netherworld, uh, where her memories have all been erased. And she meets Heinrich again, and they have another series of adventures. It's, it's a romance, and it's a comedy, and it's a thriller, um, and a drama. So it, ha it has all the elements of a good play in it. Perhaps, after I've finished your clock, that perhaps you and I might be friends. Friends?